Hello everyone and welcome to Handmade Hero, the show where we code a complete game live on stream. Uh, we are m mucking with our camera code and uh, yesterday we cleaned up a bunch of stuff that I wanted to clean up with the camera code, which is good. Uh, so now I think it's going to be a lot more uh, useful and a lot easier to work with, but uh, we didn't really get a chance to do some advanced, some, some more interesting stuff with it. So today I think basically what we want to do is just get the camera code into, uh, well, we'll add basically to the camera code that we had from yesterday to make it do a bunch of things that we want it to do for real. So for example, we want to be able to walk from room to room uh, and have it look nice and we want to be able to potentially scroll inside of rooms if they're big rooms. I don't really love that uh, idea necessarily, but you know, I want it, the capability to exist at least so that if we do want something like that, it will work. Uh, and similarly, we want to be able to uh, do things like have the camera s potentially line up in certain circumstances with where the player is. Uh, if we want to do stuff like making going downstairs work a little bit nicer or other stuff like that. So that's the main goal for today. I just want to um, basically start adding some real camera code to the camera system where it's actually going to think about what it should be looking at <clears throat> and how it should be looking at it. Uh, and that's really about it. I'm sure it will take at least today uh, to make that work. So today is today 378, so you want day 377 source code. Um, if we open up the project and just do a quick uh, check of where the camera is at at the moment, uh, you can see actually that it's working uh, pretty nicely at the moment in terms of just being able to do the basic stuff we wanted it to do, uh, but it doesn't do any interpolation or anything, so we're not, we're not really at a usable game camera yet. Uh, so you can see, for example, I've got this camera volume, and if I start going down the stairs, you can see it switched to a different perspective there, but it's just jerking around to you know whatever random place it, it uh, is told to be at any given time. That's all it does. And similarly, it doesn't, you know, if this room is large, and the, the view, it, it doesn't track the hero or anything like that. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we don't have going from room to room or anything. So although we got the camera code into a nice place in terms of being easy to specify what's supposed to happen now, and it's not so weird with the room apron and all that other sorts of stuff, um, in terms of, like, movement of the camera, we still have to figure out some good ways to put in uh, the logic and interpolation here that uh, will make it nice and, and easy to use for... And, and make the like visual effect nice. Uh, so we can start off with a pretty simple scenario, actually, uh, which is that if the hero wants to go down the stairs, we already did a kind of a little cheesy uh, version of that where it just like centers around the hero when the hero's going down it um, and then comes back when it's not. Uh, we can do much better than this, obviously. So what we would like to do is something where, you know, as the hero comes here, if the hero starts to go down the stairs, we would like the camera to interpolate over to the stairs while he's on the stairs. And then when he comes off the stairs, for example, um, he could, uh, it, it could sort of slowly recenter to wherever that is going to be. Uh, so maybe that's the center of the room or, you know, whatever it's going to be. So I think that would be nice. Uh, that would probably be the best uh, thing to do here. And uh, I feel like there's a couple of different ways we probably want to make that work. Uh, one is we have to have the interpolation code, and the other is we probably need to make more of a, a structure here that says where the stairs are versus where the start of going down the stairs are. So we probably want more camera control volumes as well, uh, just to give the camera a little more information about what we would like to have happen there. Um, Another thing that might be interesting is like if the player lingers in an area for a while, it might be interesting uh, to have the ability to do camera things there. Um, excuse me. So like for example, in this case, maybe if the if the player comes over here and wants to look over this edge, you know, the camera could could kind of come in there and and look over the edge or something like that. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff we can do, and I guess all I'm saying is let's go ahead and do it, and let's use those things as uh, reasons to exercise the camera code so we know that we get it into a position where it's going to be able to do the things that we're going to want it to do, because we're going to constantly have uh, desires for the camera 
where we want it to do specific things as we uh, get through the game design of the game and we're like oh you know it'd be nice that the camera would zoom in on this it would be nice that the camera would follow this you know blah 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 and we don't want to make it we don't want to have it be this huge headache every time we want to um, muck with it so we want the camera to be a lot more uh, facile and be able to do a lot of these things easily uh, by adding uh, code to it in a nice sim simple fashion uh, so let's start with a really simple um, maybe we'll put a simple proportional derivative controller on it uh, I talked about springs. We, we've written springs a couple times before. Maybe we'll just do something really simple there to get it to get it going. And that way we have an interpolator and we would know that we always have the ability uh, for the interpolator to um, be replaced by something better later on if we need it to be, but at least we'll have one in there so we can get interpolation working in a relatively consistent fashion. So if I go over, I believe this is in sim region, we kind of have this... Uh, Oops. Uh, Interesting. End world change. Camera for used to happen here. We don't need that anymore. Uh, so here's update camera for entity movement. And you can see here what we used to do, and the reason that we used to have smooth transitions from room to room was because we actually just put the code for interpolating room to room right in here, where we would just go, like, where are you? Let's interpolate. Uh, what I'd rather do here, again, is sort of have the notion of a target for the camera. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to pass in a DT as well. So this is basically part of the simulation step, right? Uh, so what I want to do is have a DT here. So we know when we're updating the camera for entry movement that we have a certain amount of time we want to update it for. So like here, for example, where we do target P, basically what happens is we then slap target P directly into where the camera is, right? And we just set the offset directly. We set these things directly. What I want to do instead uh, is I want to have those be explicitly uh, sort of targets that the camera is trying to hit. And then I want the camera to gradually get to them. Uh, and this is like a very common thing, right, in, in sort of games. You oftentimes want to say like, OK, I, I did a bunch of reasoning. Maybe it was really simplistic ifs. Maybe it was a complicated AI. I don't know. But then I came up with some target that I want this thing to go to. And then I don't want it to just snap there, right? Because it's supposed to be like a thing in the real world. And so then typically you have some kind of a low le lower level controller there, which could be very sophisticated in its own right, depending on how complex you want the motion to be or how complex the activity has to be. But it's still basically the same idea that you made a high level decision, in this case where the camera is supposed to be, but then you want to go ahead and put something um, into the, the lower level of that that's like, don't just immediately have that happen, have it happen gradually over time because that's the more consistent uh, thing that a player would expect to see or that makes the graphics uh, more pleasant to view, whatever. So if we take a look here, uh, if I make sort of a target offset Z um, and a world position uh, target P, like so, uh, then what I can do is say, well, okay, you know, in here, what I've got is instead of set, setting the, the camera P and the offset Z um, to be things that are going to immediately take effect, what I'd rather do is set the target position, right, uh, and the target offset Z. Now, what's interesting about this is if you look at how this is going, I really don't need to map these in like that um, because since they're set, uh, can, uh, repeatedly, I could just leave them in their own space. But what I, w I kind of want them to be in this, I, I kind of want them to be in this permanent structure in case I don't want to set them every time. Like I might eventually set a timer on here that says don't reset the target for end frames or something after it's been set. I could do other things there. I don't know what they are. So even though I don't really need to store this at the moment, I'm going to store it anyway. Uh, okay. So now what I want to do is, uh, what you'll notice is if I set these targets, then what's going to happen um, in general is if we look, uh, I got to pass the DT here, obviously. Um, I'm going to pull that out into DT. All right. 
so if I pull that out, now what's going to happen is we're going to get no camera movement at all, right? The camera is just going to stay where it was created and not do anything. Uh, why? Because now all we're doing uh, is we're just going and specifying in the target uh, P and target offset Z where we would like the camera to be, but we don't have any way of actually moving the camera from one to the other. So the next step we have to do is we have to actually make some code that will attempt to drive the camera from its current location, wherever that is, towards the target location. So in order to do that, what I want to do here is I want to map those uh, uh, both as if they were um, uh, sort of around the simulation center, right? I want to basically create uh, two positions and then I'll repack the camera's uh, information afterwards, right? So what I want to do is say, all right, there's a, there's a camera um, a P and a, a camera target P, or, and I guess in this case, since we're only working with the camera, I could just say a P and a target P. Uh, I know that basically all I need to do to get those into a local space is, for example, use the simulation center, which I store. Uh, so what I can do is say, all right, take the camera simulation center and uh, find out where the camera uh, location is relative to that, find out where the target P is relative to that, like so. And now I have two local frame uh, versions of where the camera is and where the camera wants to be. Now what I can do is I can move the camera you know, in that direction and you know, do that in a consistent rate over time. Now let's start with a really, really basic version of that. Um, one that's not particularly complicated or interesting, uh, but that just gets the job done so we can see that it's working at all. So what I want to do is I want to figure out what the delta P is. So I want to figure out where I would have to go. That's that, a very simple equation, right? I'm just going to say if I wanted to go from P to target P, I just subtract P from target P, and that's a vector going from P to target P. That's my delta B, my delta P. Uh, then what I want to do is, if I wanted to just go there, if I wanted to set directly to it, right, and we could even run this first just to make sure it's working, I could just add that in, and that's the same as setting it, right, because I've just added the difference, so it's the same as setting it. So in order to test it, we could do that, and then I could, then I know that I can muck with that uh, equation and add less of it over time and be in a good situation. All right. Uh, so let's say I did that, then I would just do map into chunk space. I would just do uh, the simulation center bit here, right? Uh, with the, the P, like so, uh, and off we would go, right? All right, so uh, that would map it back in. Now, I also need that uh, target offset Z, uh, or rather the offset Z to be set somehow. And I know I have an offset Z uh, in the camera struct and a target offset Z uh, in the camera struct, so I can load those two in, like so. Uh, and I can do the exact same thing here. So if I want to uh, mess with the target Z, I can just say uh, delta, I'm sorry, offset Z, I can say delta offset Z uh, equals target offset Z minus offset Z, uh, and then I can uh, add those as well. So I can say offset Z plus equals delta offset Z, right? So now we are in a situation where I'm just, I'm taking the difference between them, I'm adding it in, and then I'm setting it. So this should be the same code as before, uh, essentially. Right? This, should, this should give us essentially just cold setting the position uh, because all we're doing is adding the whole difference um, together. Oh, what is the problem here? Oh, yeah. Got to pass those by pointer. Uh, and so now if I run it, I should, in theory, get uh, what we had before, which is that when we go somewhere and it's supposed to change, it just straight up changes, right? Just like before. OK, so now suppose we want to make that change more gradually. Well, we know that, like, obviously, if I want to do something totally random, I could just say, well, uh, you know, whatever the time step is or something, you know, multiply the time step by it or something like this, right? And now we would be adding a fraction of uh, whatever the motion is we're supposed to do. Uh, it, we're only adding a fraction of it, right? So now when we come through here, if I'm going to go down the stairs, you can see that it kind of slowly interpolates at any given time uh, to where we're supposed to go. And all I'm doing there is saying, OK, let's just take a portion of how far I think we're supposed to go and add that in. right? 
So if you look at what's going on with that, uh, then the, the idea here is that uh, if setting it directly, if setting delta p directly, uh, or, or rather if adding all of delta p directly just moves me instantaneously from the point to the new point because that's the entire gap, then all I have to do is just create some kind of a rate at which I could go there and I will get smooth interpolation, right? Now, the reason that multiplying by t dt works is because this is basically a simplification of a more complex uh, equation that uh, you know, just happens to fall out. Uh, what do I mean by this? Well, um, if you think about what's going on here, uh, if you imagine we've got, again, uh, these points here, here is the uh, target p, maybe I'll call this, P target, and I'll call this P camera. Uh, if we want to figure out the delta between these two, right, uh, obviously we know what the delta is. Uh, the delta P in this case, like we said, is PT minus PC. That's this vector here, right? And that's just the difference between the two. So we know that if we were going to add PC uh, plus delta P, we would get pt. You know, why do we know that? Well, that's just this equation, right? That's just, if I took this equation and I so, um, uh, add pc to this side, I get this, right? So it's, it's literally just the equation of this vector. So if I want to move along a vector, right? Uh, if I want to move along a vector, we already know what the equations of motion are for points in space, right? Uh, we've done this before. We know that the uh, equation for a position uh, at time t is equal to 1 half, right? The acceleration times the time squared, uh, plus the velocity times the time, right? Plus some constant, which is the location it was at before. Uh, and that constant is, you know, p0, right? The p at time 0, right? So we know this equation. Uh, and what you can see when you look at this equation uh, is that this acceleration and this velocity, right? Uh, you could imagine those two as being vectors that are pointing in the same direction as this vector. Like, let's say they were both delta p, right? Well, if they were both delta p, uh, and, well, I should be more specific. So if they're both pointing in this direction, so I'm accelerating potentially in that direction or not, you know, either way, or I have velocity in that direction or not, either way, uh, then what, this, what does this equation end up looking like, right? Uh, well, it ends up looking like 1 half delta p times whatever the scalar acceleration is, right? So you have to imagine this, in fact, we could write this as like a capital A as a vector or something and a capital V, and we would just imagine A is the length, right? So the length of the, the acceleration is A, and the length of the velocity is V, if we want to write it that way, right? We would have one ha half, we know this is the, the direction coming out, uh, and it's got some length, whatever that length is. We then know that some, you know, we've got some magnitude here. Um, another way I could do this is, is we could pretend this was unit length, right, if we wanted to. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that for you. So delta P, right, is equal to some length, whatever that length magnitude is, uh, times itself uh, over its length. Oops. Right? So in other words, if I was to normalize this vector, if I was to make it this, this long, that would be delta p over the length of delta p, right? Uh, and so whatever the actual delta is, is just some scalar times that. It's some magnitude here times the normalized version of my vector, right? Um, so really, you know, this is not quite the proper way to write it. You would have to say something more like, Okay, so one half uh, lambda delta p over the length of delta p, right, times the acceleration plus uh, for the velocity term, same thing. It's going to be this normalized vector. Oops, I'm behind my own head. Times delta p, right, times whatever the length of the velocity is plus the original. Okay. So that's what we've, we would get. 
Now, if you look at what happens when you group these terms, you get something pretty obvious here, right? If I group these terms together, they've got this in common. Um, uh, and so what you would end up with is you would say, well, OK, uh, you know, this, this 1 half uh, A here, uh, I can pull out the, the common term, which is this term, right? Oops. Uh, and then parenthesize this, I'd get 1 half A plus V plus P0, right? Well, what you'll notice about this is that all of this, this whole thing, is just a scalar value, right? It's just a scalar value. Oh, and I forgot my t's. How did I forget my t's? t squared, t. Here we go. I can't believe I dropped my t, my time. I dropped my time out of the equation. How could I do that? Uh, any, it's easy to put back in. There's a t here and a t there. Right? All of this is just one giant scalar, right? And it's proportional to the time step, which you can see here. And it's proportional to the square of the time step in the acceleration. Now, what you'll notice is we don't have any acceleration on this, uh, on this camera. The camera is a resolved rate, basically, right? Uh, and what happens here is it's got a constant velocity that turns on. Uh, and that velocity is based on how far away uh, the 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 thing is if it's far if it gets as it gets close it, it moves less as it gets further away if it's further away it moves more quickly right uh, so we don't really have any acceleration here we've just got a term you know we we we're not doing any kind of measured acceleration all we've really got uh, is something that looks like this uh, but instead of, of uh, actually letting these two things cancel each other out and having an actual velocity, we're actually pretending that our velocity is encoded in the length of P, right? So what we're basically saying is, oh, okay, so this whole part of the equation, we're just going to ignore and say that we're going to set these to cancel each other out. So basically, that equals this so that these terms all go away our acceleration is zero and for whatever reason we're going to say that our velocity you know we could solve for the velocity the velocity that we're going to go at right is going to be however long our vector is over its own length <laughs> right uh so it, it, yeah um it's basically gonna we're just gonna set our velocity equal to uh whatever it needs to be to make that ineffectual if that makes sense um, yeah. So anyway, not particularly interesting here, uh, but, oh, no. Well, it's having a bad math morning. I take that back. This should look like this. We don't want to add the length back in. Let me explain that one more time. So I did a pretty bad job that time. Uh, I did the work here of saying, oh, okay, this is what delta p is, but what we want is only the directional portion, right? We don't actually want that part involved here when we're trying to make the length be something else. We're trying to make it be in this direction, but with this acceleration, in this direction, but with this velocity. So that was a very poor explanation. I apologize for that. <clears throat> uh, bit of a slow morning. Uh, I blame it on Jesus. It's his rising day today or whatever. Anyway, so here you go. Uh, in this case, right, again, same, everything I said, though, still applies. We've got basically the, the direction times the time, uh, and, you know, you can think of this either way you want. It's the direction times 1 half at squared plus vt, or you can pull the t out either way. Um, but we don't have an, uh, an acceleration in this case because we're not encoding any of that. We just have instantaneous velocity there, as far as uh, our current model is concerned. And what you can see here is, again, if we take a look at what that ends up being, it's the direction times the velocity um, times the time step. And perhaps, uh, let me just, since I made such a mess of it there, let me write it one more time for you so you can see it a little bit more clearly, right? We have 1 half uh, at squared plus vt plus p0 uh, is our equation for this point, the point of the camera over time, right? 
Uh, and what we want to do here is say, well, OK, we know that the direction is always going to be this direction. right? Uh, we're, t we're just saying that we're basically going to turn this into a scalar equation because that's the direction always. right? Whatever that direction happens to be, that's going to be uh, where we're going. So that means now, instead of vectors for our acceleration of velocity, we just have scalars. And we're going to say it's going to be 1 half delta p over the length of delta p right? times the acceleration magnitude times time squared, plus uh, the velocity term, which again is in the same direction, uh, times the velocity times time, plus our starting position, wherever that is. So now our equation right, simplifies out again, exactly the way I did it before. We just pull that part out. Um, and we would say, uh, well, first of all, we could do it a little simpler this time. We don't have any acceleration. We're not modeling it, right? as I'm trying to explain what we just did with the dt. We're not modeling the acceleration, so that goes away. Uh, so all we're left with is this equation. right? And so what we're effectively doing, if we just solve for what we did, right? we did this. Right? That's what I typed in. And so the question is, where, what does that actually end up doing? Well, you can see right here the p0 term is the same. right? Uh, the delta p over, uh, the, well, I should say the t is the same. right? The delta p over length of p v term is replaced by just a delta p term. right? So then the question come, uh, becomes, if delta p over the length of delta p times v is just being represented by delta p, what does that mean that v equals, <laughs> right? Well, what you can see in this case, like, so what's the velocity of our camera, right? And what you can see in this case is the delta p's drop. They're on both sides. So you divide both sides by delta p, and you just get uh, equals 1. And you multiply this over the other side, and you get v equals length of delta p. So what we have done is written a resolved rate equation where the velocity is always equal to the distance of, to the target, right? That's the velocity. So the instantaneous velocity of our camera at any time is just always equal to the distance away from the target. Now, is that a particularly good velocity to use? No. I, I just wanted to explain why that was working there. Uh, but so you can kind of see that's a, that already gives us an interpolating camera, which is good. right? Uh, we now know that our stuff is working properly. It's just not a particularly pleasant interpolating camera. Um, it doesn't really do exactly what we want in terms of like behavior or anything like that, but it's a good start because now we can start of work with that equation more. Now here's the thing. Uh, like I said, <clears throat> in here we've got kind of a situation uh, where, in fact, let's maybe break this down a little bit. Let's uh, not do the stairwell first because that's kind of a two-part thing. Let's do something first where we're just, if we're sitting here looking over the precipice or precipice, however you want to do that, uh, let's say if you come look over the precipice and you just wait there, uh, it'll kind of move over and show it to you. And then if you start moving, it will stop, right? It'll go back to the center. Uh, let's do something like that. So what I want to do uh, is inside the entity, I'm going to stop making this a flag, and I'm going to make it an actual camera behavior thing. Uh, so instead of controls camera, that's going to go away. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're just going to have a uh, enum... Uh, called camera behavior, uh, and I'm going to have a thing here which is like camera uh, um, I don't know inspect. Something like that. Uh, and then I'm going to put one of these camera behaviors in here. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and throw that in like so. Although, actually, I guess I, I think this is like a real thing. So I guess it, it's supposed to go up in the part uh, that we actually wanted stuff to have, like this. I also suppose this can go away, huh? All right. There we go. Uh, so now, in here, what I want to do is say uh, if test entity camera behavior. Uh, is not, you know, is non-zero, uh, and it overlaps, then we're going to do something, right? Uh, that's really all we need to know at the moment. 
And uh, let me go ahead and set that here properly. Uh, and this is going to be, uh, I guess, this will we'll leave this as inspect for now, but in, we're going to want to do a custom one, like I said, for that stairwell behavior. So we'll write a different one in a second. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Okay. Uh, so now we should still get the same behavior, right? Like we were before. Yep. Uh, and so now what I want to do is I want to come back here and say, well, okay, uh, in addition to this uh, camera volume that we're doing here, I'm going to do a second camera volume. Uh, and I want this camera volume to be where uh, this hole, the left hole is, right? So I want the left hole between negative 5 and negative 3. Uh, that's where I want that to be. And so we'll just say uh, note uh, hole <laughs> stairs, um, like so. So in here, if we said, OK, begin grounded entity is camera inspect, we know that the x dimension here is actually two tiles on either side, right? Uh, because it's uh, negative 5 to negative, uh, that's. I thought it was bigger than that. I guess it's negative. Oh, it's less than equal to. So it's five, four, three. It's only three wide. So I guess uh, it's actually 1.5 tiles in either direction. I guess. Uh, the Y dim will only be one tile wide. Uh, and then when we do rectum in max here, uh, I guess what I want to do here is say, uh, OK, this is not. This is not quite what we want. We don't really want to recommend. We want rect center dim. So in this case, what I want to do is say, OK, so the dimension is going to be, uh, and, and I guess the dimension, we don't have to give it half. So in this case, it's just 1 and 3, right? So it's x dim, y dim, and then this is a pretty reasonable dimension for the height as well. So what I'm going to do here is say, all right, now we need to place this thing uh, world-wise somewhere. Uh, and what we want to do is we're going to center it, uh, I guess, in terms of its placement. We would need, uh, this is a little dicey, because in this case, we need the placement to be offset by uh, half a meter, right? Because in the middle of a, of a three sort of thing. Uh, but I guess that's OK. In fact, I guess what we could do is, I guess in this case, what I could do is still use the min-max and center it sideways so I don't have to give an offset to this. So anyway, uh, if I want to do that, it'd be centered around negative 4 as an offset. Uh, and it would be centered around, uh, I guess, for y, it would be at y2, right? Because uh, it's going to be just below where the hole is. Uh, and so if I did a rectum in max, in this case, uh, yeah, I want to do a, a, a negative y dim, y dim there. And in the case of the x dim, it's a little bit more specific. Uh, so I want to do that a little bit more carefully. This one's just going to be at 0 uh, and then typical floor height. So that part's all fine. So it's really just the x dim that I care about. So in the x dim, if we're centered at negative 4 uh, and we want negative 5, oh, I guess this, you know what? This just does work, doesn't it? Because if we're centered on that and I do, ha yeah. I think that actually does work if this is centered on the tile. So that's actually fine now I think about it. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, uh, that will give me a camera uh, at the hole. Oh, I'm on the wrong side of it, though. So I really want negative 1 here. Forgot that y goes up. Old CRT mentality. Uh, so there we go. And so if I come over here. Um, and I do the sort of weird head jerk in here. You can see that it, it does what I expect it to do. Uh, and it's also, let's see here. It, that's also the right height, which is basically most of the area here. Maybe I should tone that height down a little bit. Maybe it couldn't, shouldn't be quite so much. But that's a reasonable camera region. So what I want to do now is I want to actually make some code for that inspection uh, area. And so what I'm going to do here is just say, 
these entities, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they always have IDs. So what I can do is I can basically track inside the camera. If you're inside a, a, one of these special camera things, uh, I can basically track that information. So what I can say is uh, like, you know, entity ID uh, in special or something like this. Uh, and I can do T in special. <clears throat> So what I can do here is I can say, all right, we have a special camera. Uh, I'm not going to do this part at the moment. I'm going to get this out of here. So at the moment, I'm just going to, that was the code uh, for doing the only if you're going up for the stairwell. We'll put that in when we do the, the full stair stuff. So what we do is say, okay, the special camera is equal to whatever the test entity um, is that we overlapped. And then when we come down here, what I'm going to say is, all right, if there was a special camera found in that pass, uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare its ID to the ID we're currently tracking. So I'm going to say, all right, the camera was tracking a special ID if that is the same as the one from the camera. And I think we have an uh, like R equal for those. I don't really know. <clears throat> Do we? Yeah, there it is, is equal. Uh, so we have an is equal. So if those two are equal, uh, the in special and the ID, then I know that we uh, are in the same camera as we were last time, because we're going to set that, right? Uh, we're going to say, you know, we're going to remember. right? Uh, and we're, furthermore, we're going to clear it. Uh, anytime we don't find ourselves in a special camera. Uh, I don't know if we have a way to do that. I don't think we do. But we do now. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> what we're going to do here is we're going to say, all right, Every frame, we're going to track what, 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 which of these volumes, if there's a special camera, uh, which one you're in. And we're going to use that as a piece of important piece of information. Right? We're going to check to see on any given frame, are they the same? If they're not, right? So if, if this is a new one, uh, well, I guess we could do it this way. So uh, if they're not the same, so we're in a different one as last time, then what we want to do is clear uh, the amount of time that the counter that's going to count how much time we've spent in a particular one. We're going to clear that. Otherwise, we're going to add the delta time to it, right? <clears throat> so basically, we're just keeping an accumulator of how long you've been in a, in, inside a specific camera. Uh, if you've been in a, inside a camera long enough, let's say, then we're going to actually uh, use that special camera as an alternate target otherwise not okay so in this case what we want to do is say well okay uh, if the T in special is over a certain value uh, then we'll use it so we could do you know if for example special camera and camera T in special uh, is greater than one second or something like this right <clears throat> and this isn't quite what we want yet, uh, but it's getting closer. So for example, now if I came over here and stood in here, you can see after a little bit, it will come over. And if I hop back outside, uh, then it won't. Uh, and we can make that a little bit longer even. You know, it could be five seconds. Uh, so here I come over here, I stand by the edge, and then it goes like, okay, one, two, three, four, five and then it comes over, right? Just so you can exaggerate the effect. I don't think you'd actually want it to be set to that high, uh, but that's the idea, right? Uh, and then if you leave this area, it, it will go back to viewing the room as you would normally view it. Uh, and again, you can come back in here uh, and wait for a little bit and it will go view uh, that location, right? <clears throat> now furthermore, uh, that could control the zoom 
as well if we wanted to. So for example, inside this, uh, the entities, uh, if we had, um, Hmm. Let's say the entity had in here a camera offset Z. Uh, and so if that was the case, then in here, you know, we set the target uh, Z like this. What we could do instead is say, all right, uh, the target offset Z equals 8.0. Um, otherwise, the target offset Z in the case of the special is going to be the camera offset Z like that. Um, and then we would have that information. So what we want to do is, uh, in this case, say, well, OK, the target offset Z is going to be either coming from our expected offset Z or it's going to come from whatever this entity is. And so that would allow us to zoom in at, as well, right? So what we can do here is in the world mode where we create this thing, um, <clears throat> we set that as the behavior. Furthermore, what we could do in this case is we could say, well, you know, maybe behavior is actually has a couple different components to it. You know, maybe the behavior is actually more of a flags field. Um, so you know, the camera behavior has an inspect, it has a zoom. Right? Uh, so maybe what happens here is more like if camera behavior, oops, sorry. Uh, we set it, uh, and otherwise we don't, right? So then in here we would say it's an, this is, a, oh, that's the whole camera is this one here. So that's an inspect and it does affect the zoom, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so something like this, right? And let's go ahead and push that up. There we go. Uh, so now when we come over here after five seconds elapses, we should uh, zoom in. Now granted, we set the zoom to zero, which is not a particularly good zoom. Uh, so we should probably set that to something else. Maybe that. Uh, and maybe that special, uh, let's set that to something more reasonable. Uh, so now after two seconds, it'll zoom in. It still seems to be zooming in quite a bit more than I would have expected. Uh, did I, that, see, that still looks like it's z z more set to zero. Did I miss something? Well, so if it's eight, it should not zoom in at all, right? So I'd be interested, let me see what happens here. Maybe three is not high enough up. No, so we have definitely have a weird uh, situation going on there, right? Uh, it should not be zooming in nearly that much. Uh, it's as if the camera offset Z is set to zero, like completely set to zero. Oh. How about I actually get it off the camera? I was actually getting it off of the hero, which doesn't make any sense because unsurprisingly, the hero doesn't have that set given that the hero is not a camera volume. All right, uh, so in this case, we can zoom in, right? Uh, and if we wanted to, we could even have more uh, of an offset. Uh, in this case, we could make it so that, for example, a, if we wanted to really have a very specific uh, way in which this was working, we could make it so that this offset is a full offset uh, so that it could specify all, you know, exactly how it wants to be placed. So for example, we could say, well, the offset's going to be, you know, nothing in, in, um, 
in X, uh, but in Y we do want to go, you know, uh, two units up or something like this. So you're looking more uh, down at the hole uh, in particular or something like this. So in that case, you end up with a thing where it's like, all right, you're going to get a target offset Z. It's going to come from here. You're also going to modify the targets, the target P. Uh, it's XY is going to get uh, offset by whatever the XY is in here. Oops. Um, <clears throat> uh, and now you can slide the camera around as well uh, by saying here's where the target should end up relative to where this, uh, you know, the hero is at that time, right? Uh, so now if you want to, right, you can kind of do this thing where the, the camera will zoom in when the hero is, is kind of over the hole so you can see down. Uh, it does occur to me that our fog, uh, our um, layer picking is not picking far enough down at the moment uh, because of the change we made and how hot big floors are. Uh, but now that's kind of fun, right, where you can sort of, if you happen to be looking down over there, uh, you can can see what's in there and that's kind of fun, right? Don't know if that'll actually work for gameplay. It might be too uh, difficult. Maybe you do it only if all the monsters are dead or something like that. So it's, you know, it's not gonna be a problem, uh, but it's kind of fun, right? I mean, that's just kind of a nice, it, it's just interesting. It's games, you know, a lot of times are about having lots of little interesting things you can do. And so again, this is just a nice thing once you have a 3D camera and everything is 3D-ish, you know, it's just kind of nice to be able to play with it uh, in that way. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty great. I, I'm, I'm into that. I'm into that as a feature. I like it. I think it takes too long to kick in. Uh, but there you go. All right, so uh, what we could do too is make it so you have to actually stop there. At the moment, it's just however long you're in this thing. Uh, but maybe what that should do is uh, it should have to have a trigger in terms of your velocity and that velocity has to be zero, right? Um, so we can do that too. We can do like, uh, you know, velocity measure or something like this. Uh, and maybe inspect just knows that the velocity measure is that. So, you know, uh, in this case, we would say camera behavior inside here, if it overlaps, we would say, well, okay, if the camera behavior uh, is an inspection behavior, uh, then we've got some other sh um, sort of modifications that we're going to have to do. So if the camera behavior is camera inspect, uh, which is the only kind of one we know at the moment, uh, then what we need to do is, we could even set this by default and then do it in here. Uh, what we could say is if uh, the entity uh, DP is nothing, um, or should I say is greater than anything, uh, then the special camera is zero. Um, so in theory now, if I like am going through here and I'm like playing and doing stuff and like fighting people or whoever knows what, uh, it won't do it. But if I stop, in theory, we should go in there. Of course, we don't. I wonder if that's because the velocity never quite goes to zero. We may need a little bit of tolerance there. Let's say something like that. Uh, so again, there we go. So I think excuse me, that's roughly what I'm looking for. Uh, and so now we just kind of need some more stuff in here that's like, uh, you know, ways, ways of handling the stairwell specifically. Uh, so the stairwell right now has been changed so that the stairwell actually will do uh, exactly the same thing as the inspect does. So if I'm in the stairwell and moving, it won't do anything, which is not what we want. Uh, and if I'm in the stairwell and, and just waiting there, it'll kind of come over, right? Uh, but that's not what we want. What we want to do is say, well, okay, if the player is moving down the stairwell, 
then we want, even if they're on the top square, we probably want to focus in. Once they get on the actual stairwell, then we never want to do anything other than be in stairwell focus, right? So we want to force you to stairwell focus um, once, you get, once you get to that point. Uh, and then only once you're actually out of the stairwell focus region do we want a, the camera to return to what it's doing. Uh, so what I want to do here is say like, okay, in the stairs cam, uh, I want to basically, let me, all right, much better. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so no one had better use those terms now because those are like fully trademarked. <clears throat> uh, all right, so in here we basically have uh, begin ground entities uh, for the t for the stairs, exactly like we do for the hole where there's just one. But for the stairs, I think we probably want two different ones because if you're on the actual stairs, we always want to be in stair cam mode. There shouldn't be any way to get out of it. But if you're just passing by the top, right? Uh, then we don't really want to be in stairs cam mode. So we probably want to create two of these, I guess was what I would say. Uh, so what we want here is we want to do like, a, you know, a second one of these. Uh, and we'll figure out what they're supposed to be in a second. Uh, so for starters, let's just do the main stair area. Um, and this could be just a uh, force to player or something like this. So it's basically like if you're in here or like, uh, you know, if you're in here, you're just going to view the player like immediately. Uh, something like that. <clears throat> uh, if you're here, I guess in this case, we also would do view player. Uh, but the difference in this case is just going to be that uh, we would uh, add a, the velocity constraint, right? Uh, so in this case, uh, we might have to add an or here to like choose whether the velocity is happening or not. So all right, uh, so we have begin ground entity, camera behavior, view player, uh, in, and uh, all we need to do is adjust these dimensions. So in this case, we've got a I guess what we want here is to say, and let me give, give me one second here because I don't really remember exactly what the layout of this looks like. Uh, so if we come back here, I just want to look at this. So we've got four. Um, and I guess that one is shallow enough that maybe you should have to be going the right direction too. I don't know. So maybe we cover these two with the directional one and these three with, uh, with the other way around. And you know, it might be that we want it to be directional. First of all, we got to make those go lower down. All right, hold on a second. So we got to make this a little bit different here. Uh, so let's let's start by getting these stairs to be the way stairs are. And also the stairs probably have to be longer uh, now that I'm thinking about it. I mean, if you look at that, we probably need the stairs to have more steps to them because they're, we don't want them to be too steep. So I feel like that's got to be, yeah. Um, so, all right. Uh, so what we want here is Uh, we probably want to take this offset Z and we probably want to first of all set it to be consistent. Before it was actually picking up the, the noise values here. Uh, and so what we probably want to do is actually stop that and just have it be non-noisy. So the stairs are even uh, going all the way down. That was not what I wanted. Should that not have done what I just what I should that not have reproduced what I had there? 
correct me if I'm wrong, I'm taking 0.5 plus a random unilateral. So the minimum this could be is 0.5, and I'm subtracting this from it, right? So shouldn't that... I guess I don't understand why that, why that modified anything at all. Here's my current version. All right, that is a complete puzzle to me. I have to admit, I do not understand why that did that. Because the offset Z here was already going to be 0.5 up, and now I'm overwriting it with essentially that same amount minus this. That should have been the same, right? I mean, maybe I'm missing something. But I don't understand why that would actually be different. Um, I want to know what's going on here. So this should produce the correct thing. Well, correct, but it should produce the old thing, right? Uh, so now I want to set a breakpoint there, and I want to see it do that, because uh, I want to know what's going on there. Oh, and I'm going to take us out of uh, release mode build so I can debug that code. All right, so... In this case, test Z is 0.5, which is exactly what we would expect it to be. Uh, let me see what P dot offset. Ah, you know what? No, it's because this world position P has an offset in it already. Uh, that's that's why. Never mind. Never mind. This is not zero up here. It could be some arbitrary value. So not, not quite the case. All right, so in terms of the noise here, uh, I guess what I need to do is I'm going to need to put the noise in here if I want to turn it off for the stairs. Um, So hopefully now we have an even stairwell. Uh, and now the problem is just it needs to go down a little bit more, right? Uh, so it needs to be maybe more like that. Or there need to be more steps, one or the other. Um, all right. Uh, so yeah, I feel like there maybe should be just more steps going down. Uh, like the stairwell should be a little bit longer. Uh, you know, like maybe at least one more. Uh, so like maybe the offset Y from negative two to two actually goes, you know, from negative three to two or something like this. That one there is like too high up, so because this is going to have to be plus three now. So there we go. 
Uh, so now the stairwell starts there and goes down. Uh, if I take a look under here, you can see that's a little bit smoother, right? Uh, so, all right. Yeah. All right, so I don't really know whether that's still too steep. I mean, we could make it a little bit less steep still. Uh, we could make it be more like that. And now we've got just a big old stairwell. You can see it go down there. Maybe this needs to be a little bit less, too. All right. So I think now I've got a stairwell that's a little bit more sensible, perhaps, uh, right, in terms of, of gradualness of steps. Uh, and so now we just need to make it so that when the hero comes over on there, uh, again, we don't get that, that clipping artifact by moving the camera into a good position for it. Which I think should be relatively easy. Uh, and maybe, you know, maybe the stairwells uh, could, one another thing we could do is make the stairwells be too wide. You know, the other thing, I haven't really thought about this, but we could do something like this. Uh, would be another way of, of uh, treating it. So if you had larger stairwells, right, and you made it so that the hero was centered on those steps, which we could easily do, uh, then there'd be a lot more clearance too when going down the stairs, which might be all we really need. Uh, and that could be a more compelling way to deal with it as well. So maybe that's a good idea. Um, And so really what we would do there is we'd create the stairs in sort of a, a slightly separate pass. So really what we would say is, you know, something like, okay, um, So we'd say something like, okay, the, the left hole, right hole situation, these are both knockouts. Uh, and then if you make it through, you end up with this. Uh, and so now there's just like nothing in either of those two places. Uh, so maybe now you say, okay, you know, the, the stairwell is narrower. It's back the way it was. So now it's just a hole there in the floor, uh, and the hole is, is a narrower hole. Uh, that still seems a little large, doesn't it? Um, so why is that four? Because in theory, that's negative one, zero, oh, and one and two. So that's four wide. Okay, yeah. So if now if I wanted to, I could go ahead and make, uh, w instead of like in this circumstance where we're making these specific size ground tiles, I could make some stair tiles that are different, right? Uh, so what I would do there is I can just say, okay, uh, we take the offset Y uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and make some stair tiles exactly the way we were making them. Uh, before. 
Um, but this time, we're just going to hard code uh, the offset x. Uh, and we have to do a little bit of offsetting here. You'll see this in a second, but uh, we can take care of that in a minute. So whatever the offset x is, what should it be here? It's between 3 and 4. So it's like 3.5, right? Um, so anyway, we're going to have a thing where we say, all right, we want you know the offset x to be 3. So it does that offset x to 3. Uh, but then we want to do like an offset uh, of of p where we're going to add half a tile, right? In fact, I don't even know. What does this function actually do? See, there it's got an additional offset right here. So what I can do is say, all right, in addition to that, I want you to do half a tile. Um, to put us in the center of the stairwell, basically. Uh, and then I know that we're just going to create uh, one of these stair pieces. All right. Uh, so in theory now we will create uh, an actual stairwell in there uh, and uh, you can see it. Well, actually, let me just go ahead and flip to the debug view so you can see it. Uh, you can see that there's uh, the stairwell there. And actually, uh, we're creating way too many, so I don't really want it to be radius y. I just want it to be between negative 1 and 2. Uh, and so now what we want to do is we want to make these uh, also um, be wider, right? We just want the stairs to be wider, potentially. Um, they don't really have to be necessarily wider, um, but they can be, right? Uh, and so if I, I don't guess I, <laughs> the other problem is I guess I don't know exactly how to get down to one of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so basically what we've got here is those stairs are kind of in the middle, right? They're like, uh, they're in between the two. And we probably need them to be spaced out a little more than they are right now uh, and start a little higher. So I don't know. That's another option for stairwells. And then you know the hero is pretty safely, even if we don't adjust the camera, the hero wouldn't clip through, right? Um, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. It's an interesting idea. I hadn't thought of it. Um, it's just a little weird at that join point, too. Uh, <laughs> we're, in, we're in kind of a loop here. There you go. Um, I don't know how that would feel, right? It's it's going to always create a thing here where you're on between these two. I guess no matter which one, where you go, you hop. You're going to hop kind of down um, to that middle square. And maybe that's fine. I don't know. Graphically speaking, we can also make it wider. Uh, you know, we can we can double out how wide they are so that they feel like a double, like they're the, the width of both of them, like so, right? Uh, and then the hero hops down like so on the large stairs. Uh, I suppose that's also an option. Of course, I guess since we don't allow you to have different since we currently only pass down an x and a, uh, a, a dimension for the square tile, 
and we don't uh, we don't allow it to be wide and not uh, yeah we, we we currently don't actually draw those as having different width and height they only have different depth basically so we would have to add that if we actually wanted just wide stairs so I don't know I don't know how I feel about that I'll leave it in for now because it's just an interesting thing to do. When we actually go to do world stuff, obviously we'll have some stronger opinions about these sorts of things uh, when we're starting to build the actual world. Uh, but let's just go ahead and do the camera stuff for now since that's the more interesting part of this. So here we are in our stairs cam. What we need now is a thing on the stairs and a thing at the top of the stairs, presumably. Um, so if we want to do that, we could basically say like, okay, we've got the stairs part. Uh, the stairs part is going to be centered around, um, I guess, centered around one for the radius part. Uh, and it's going to be one tile in either direction. Uh, the X dim in this case could be half a tile because now we're sort of centered. Uh, and the location here um, is actually going to be offset uh, slightly right, by whatever that stair P is. Uh, and what I can do here if I want to is I can also do something like, say, uh, um, I, can, I can use this exact <clears throat> uh, this exact set of things here to store these. So if I want to, I can say, oh, the stair P, um, so I don't have to look them up again. I can just say the stair position stuff is going to be, um, you know, an array of, of what, what is it, negative one, zero, and so four of these guys. Uh, and I can just say stair p offset y plus b. Uh, so I can record those as well. And then that way when I'm creating these here, I can pull that out. Oops. So the stair placement in this case, I guess I just want the second one, third one, I guess, in. Uh, and yeah, that's roughly correct, I think. Um, so that, why is that so tall? I'm gonna turn, first of all, start by turning this off. Uh, and so I don't understand why that's quite the way it is, but I guess it makes some sense. Hold on a second. Let me take a look here. So you can see that it's being created like, I guess it's right about there. Um, but I'm not quite sure. Ah, that's why. It's because we don't actually, if we're actually going to put it at that height, uh, then we don't want it to extend down nearly that far. Let's try that one more time. All right. So again, a little strange because I'm not sure what the abs tile Z in this case is. I guess we're getting the abs tile Z of this floor and then we're going up from there. So what we really want to do for a given stairwell is it wants to be much lower than that. So I guess what we really want to do is for that part of it, since the stair is going downward, what we really want to do is say, well, we probably want to end actually pretty, pretty low, right? This, uh, this hit region, generally speaking why did that not do what I thought it was going to do oh because I'm editing the wrong one that's why
So yeah, I think we want this to, to end pretty close uh, to the floor level of the floor above, right? Because that looks like more of the region that the player would be in. It probably needs to be a little higher than that. Uh, and then it should probably be up a little bit more. So we probably want something more like this. That looks like about the right region. Um, maybe it needs to be a little bigger. Uh, so I think that's about right. Uh, and then when I hop down here, I'm only in it if I'm actually on these stairs, right? And that's the actual stair region. So really, this is the stairs cam. This is the, like, this is, like, the top of the stairs. Uh, so let's go ahead and add, oops, one more for the top of the stairs. Um, that one's going to be centered around stair P0. Uh, and in this case, I guess I want to... I guess I want to make it the whole size and... I don't know that it goes down particularly far. Yeah, I'm not really sure what we want for this. Um, uh, so, okay, that's a little too large. But other than that, that's actually pretty good. Let's tone it back a little. Um, so that seems pretty reasonable, right? Like that's, that's I think about right there. And, you know, we can sort of tune those a little bit more as we go. Uh, but now we just need to actually have some logic in here. Uh, let's just double check that I didn't mess up this guy. I think this, this one's still correct, right? Uh, and now I just need this one to be like if I'm it needs to kind of get over there right away if I'm if I'm going toward the stairs right if I'm coming up this way um, and then it needs to not if I'm doing anything else all right so let's upgrade the camera behavior here to handle all that stuff right because now we need some better behavioral code uh, because we've got kind of a lot of different things that could be happening we're gonna have to make this uh, be a little bit more specific, right? Um, so essentially what we've got here is we need to determine a couple of different things. We need to determine whether a particular camera entity is controlling or not. Um, and so what we want to do here is probably not set the special camera, because if anyone, if any of the peoples it, who are overlapping, if any overlapping camera region, it would have tested positive, we probably want to use it, right? So what we want here is probably something more like this, uh, where we say like, okay, if you know, if you're conforming to the velocity constraints, then off you go. So how would we encode some velocity constraints here? I'm assuming what we want to do is say something like, well, okay, let's say that there is a um, like a dot product here where we say like velocity measure uh, and we do a velocity measure of the test entity um,
we'll take the entities, like the player's motion vector, and we'll say, okay, whatever, there's going to be some thing we'll inner product with here that's going to measure this thing. Uh, and then we'll do that first, and then we'll take uh, the length of that, right? So we'll say whatever the absolute value is um, of that uh, velocity measure, that's what we'll use, right? Now, I guess that's not quite what we want. I guess we more want, instead of a dot product, we want more of a, of a coefficient. I think we still want the length to be in here. So I think we really want more of a Hadamard product here. So basically, you can multiply the x, the y, or the z velocities by something and then get out what you're then going to uh, look at. Right? I think that's probably more what we want. And so we'll leave it at that for now. Um, and so then what we need is some kind of an interval, right? We need some way of saying, well, you know, if the velocity at that point is a certain amount, then uh, that's what we want. Now, I guess in this case, we could also just, if we know that the velocities that we're going to be checking are always in the primary directions, we could just bound them explicitly, right? We could do something like, this sort of a thing, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, and furthermore, we don't really have to do that. We could just do a point in rectangle. Right? We could say if the velocity point is within the camera, rec is, is within the camera's uh, controlling entities, velocity rectangle, because we can use, you know, we can have rectangles in velocity space just like everything else. So if it's within, um, you could say there's a velocity requirement. Uh, if it's in there, then off you go. Furthermore, we could say whether there is a velocity requirement or not um, could be a thing. So what we could say is, all right, if it overlaps, you know, and So we test for overlap first because everyone has that. Then we see whether or not you've got a uh, velocity constraint. Um, and I guess the thing is, we've got two kinds of velocity constraints. We've got, you must be greater than a certain amount, uh, or you must be less than a certain amount, right? Uh, and it's a little bit hard. So we're, we're creating a rectangle. I guess we can just put that rectangle anywhere we want. So we could make it, I guess, I guess you could probably do most of the things you'd want to do with a rectangle. The thing is you can't really invert a rectangle very easily. So if you wanted to say the player just has to be moving a certain s amount, uh, that's harder, right? So I don't know, maybe this isn't the best way to do it. I'm just trying to think of what, what good ways to do it are. Because like in one case, we want it to say if you're not moving. In another case, we want to say if you're moving in a particular direction. I'm just trying to think of like what's the easiest way to provide some easy controls so that when you're creating entities, you can just throw uh, in some information and not have to add a new camera behavior every time uh, you have a different thing. It's hard to say. I'm not <clears throat> not sure about that one. Uh, my gut says most of the time we're going to care about 
a particular direction of motion or no motion at all. Right? In other words, be careful whether you're going towards something or whether you're stationary or whether you're moving. So there's like, is my speed greater than this? Is my speed less than this? And then also, am I going in a particular direction? All right, I think that's what we want. So I think maybe a, a rectangle is not such a good idea. Excuse me. So I do think we want the other kind. Uh, so if we want velocity constrained, uh, then we want to, again, like I said, do uh, a test here. But that test probably shouldn't be is in a rectangle. It should probably be something like, um, you know, an is in range. Uh, and then we would have test entity uh, min camera min velocity, uh, whatever the thing is we're going to use, test entity camera max velocity. So we would specify the like min and max velocity. And then in here we would need um, <clears throat> uh, some way of, of figuring out what the velocity is along a particular vector. And the problem here is like, well, we'd like to be able to do something where we just said, well, it's the length squared of, you know, and we, we can square these as well. So we keep it all in the same space. Uh, Uh, we know that the entity, in the case of we just wanted to do the, the uh, speed by itself in whatever direction the entity was going, we could take the length squared of its velocity and be done. Then this equation works just fine, and we could figure out whether or not it conformed. The problem is if we want to know if it's in a particular direction, then what we have to do here is say we want to take the inner product uh, of the entity with some kind of velocity direction, right? And the problem there is that we want that, like, once we do that, we have lost the ability to ask the question about how fast uh, the entity is going in any particular direction, right? Because now it's going to collapse that down into a scalar, and we can't take, we, we won't have any ability any, any longer to ask a question about that, uh, about arbitrary motion. Uh, so we pretty much need two things here. I mean, we could do something absurd. We could do something like this. So that basically allows the person to construct an equation where they basically have one term that is the length of the uh, velocity vector of the player at the time. They have another term that is the length uh, of the velocity vector of the player along a particular axis that they specify, right? Uh, and then they are able to set these coefficients to see um, which ones they want. So if they only want an equation based on this one, they set A to 1 and B to 0 and vice versa. They could also have both of them involved somehow, which I'm not sure why you would want that, but you could have that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, furthermore, you could clamp the inner, which would allow you to do that a little bit better uh, if you really wanted to. I don't know. 
So you could do something like this where they can actually pick them out. Um, and what we could do also, I suppose, is have, have flags that do that. So maybe that's the right way to do it. Uh, maybe we say, OK, if the camera velocity, um, uh, like general velocity constraint, something like that, uh, then what we do is say, well, that's just, just, that's just this. Right, so um, <clears throat> and I guess the other thing I could do is make this a little cleaner to read by doing something like um, so we start out by saying, well, it passes if it overlaps. And then we have to start doing our constraints. So then we would say, well, if uh, there is a velocity constraint on this thing, uh, then we do this. And we can just phrase it in the, in the, in the uh, pass equals pass and. So if any previous pass had not succeeded, then this one won't succeed either, right? Uh, so then we can just say, OK, that's if we have a general velocity constraint. If we have a directional velocity constraint, then we use the other kind. Uh, like so. Uh, and then that's a little bit more understandable, right? In this case, now the entities have to have those, so they've got uh, they've got to have camera velocity direction um, and camera min velocity, camera max velocity, and we need those. Uh, general velocity constraint, directional velocity constraint uh, need to be in there. I think that's more or less it, right? Uh, we don't have an in it is in range call, I don't think, yet. Uh, so I'll just add one here. All is in ranges is just a way of saying there's a min, there's a value, there's a max. Uh, and I just want to say result equals uh, min is less than or equal to the value and max well, value is less than or equal to max. It's really just a I interval inclusion, right? Like it's a one dimensional rectangle uh, is this point inside these two bounds. Uh, all right, so now uh, we haven't actually used any of this stuff yet. Uh, so in theory, when we hop in here, nothing different is going to happen, the same exact thing. Uh, but now what we should be able to do is inside world mode is actually use those. Uh, so now when we have like the top and the stairs here, uh, the stairs is going to be view player. And uh, we kind of want, like I said, we want to, uh, I don't know if, I'm not sure how we should phrase this, but we've got view player and inspect. Uh, inspect is going to, I think what we want to do here is have view player and inspect be different in terms of how they're actually handled in uh, the part at the bottom. Uh, so for example, in here where we have special camera, uh, camera behavior equals zoom, we also want camera behavior uh, and view player. We, we want these to be uh, distinct. Uh, so what I want to do here is say, well, OK, in the case where I've got the camera inspect flag, I, I really want to take the camera itself. And I want you to look at the cam what, where the camera is specified to be. Uh, not, not the camera itself, the, the, 
controlling box, right? The box that controls the camera, I want to look there. Uh, but if I'm viewing the player, then I want to use the player's actual position. And then when we're applying the offset here, uh, um, that's a thing that, that can happen separately. So e either of them can have that in it, right? And that's just a, a separate flag that you can control uh, with, with no other um, concerns there. Uh, so now, you know, when we come over here um, and, and you're inside here, when you're moving around, it, should, it shouldn't follow you, right? It shouldn't go left or right. It should just stay there and then come out. Uh, and when I'm over here, though, uh, this one should follow me. So when I come in here, now you can see it actually moves left to right with me. So there's a difference. I wanted there to be a difference between viewing the player and viewing an area. And those should be like actually sort of separate ideas, right? Um, if that makes sense. Uh, OK. So we got that under control. And then the other thing I want to do now is I want to actually clean up this timing bit. Uh, because again, the timing part is going to be specific as well. Uh, so in this case, we can probably put in a thing here that's like, oh, hey. In addition to a min and max velocity, let's have a camera min time or something like that. Uh, and so it's going to be in here where we do that sort of special camera if you're uh, uh, if you're greater than or, or uh, equal to a certain accumulator. This, this accumulator will always happen. Uh, that will be camera T in special is greater than uh, special camera camera min time. Uh, and that way, when we're creating these, for the whole cam, we know that we want the camera to have a, uh, a minimum time that's not zero. You know, we want that minimum time to be one second or whatever it is. But for the stairs, we don't really want there to be a minimum time. Uh, so for the stairs, it should happen as soon as I'm in there, right? And as soon as I'm out, it just, uh, and in, it, it, it does it. But for this one, it should wait, right? Uh, and not do it. And furthermore, while I'm moving, I don't want to do it. So now I have to start using those velocity constraints uh, because those have gone away now. So what I want to do is I want to put a general velocity constraint on this one. I want to say, OK, um, for this particular camera, I'm going to have a general velocity c constraint where the min velocity can be as low as you want, um, but the max velocity can't be very high. right? Um, and then on these, for example, on the stairs, I just want it to always, if you're on the stairs, you, you view the player, like period. I don't really want anything um, to interfere with that. But in this case, uh, I do want a camera um, directional velocity constraint uh, where I would say, OK, there's a camera velocity direction uh, of moving in Y down the stairwell. Uh, I want the min velocity to be zero, and I want the, um, I'm sorry, I want the minimum velocity to be like something in that direction, and the max velocity can be whatever you want. Is it like maximum or something? Where are the max? Where are our minimum and maximum values? There we go. Let's do a little quick. Oops. Let's just do a little quick update of these names to the new shorter names, which are nicer. And they have nice syntax highlighting in Forcoder, which is good. Um, 
where's the other one? There it is. Uh, all right. Uh, so now, in theory, anyway, um, when I come over to this thing, um, I should have to have some velocity in that direction before the camera moves, in theory. However, that theory appears to be wrong. It seems like as long as I have any y velocity uh, that that worked. Uh, which is not what I wanted at all. Let's double check that camera velocity constraint. Maybe I've got some buggy, buggy boos in there. Let's see. Uh, so here's the directional velocity. Uh, oh, well, OK. So for starters, this is not correct now uh, because, yeah, so this inner product will not give you a square. It'll actually just give you the, the actual length along that vector. Um, so that shouldn't have been squaring it. I don't know, F32 max is probably a problem for squaring. I'm not sure what happens if you square the maximum value. Uh, that could be a problem. But, um, and I guess also in here, we would have that same problem if someone used one of the mins or the maxes uh, for length squared. So what I could do is say, well, all right, let's just, we'll do the actual square root there. It's not that expensive anymore. Uh, and leave it like that. However, I don't know that that was really the bug, uh, so we're going to have to take a, a closer look at what's going on there. But um, I know maybe that was the bug. So now it seems like it's working. Uh, there's a little bit of a weird. There shouldn't be any hard edges here, but it felt like there was one there. Uh, the jerking back and forth of uh, is, is natural because we're not modeling acceleration yet, but there, it felt like there was actually a snap. And I don't feel like there should ever be a snap at the moment uh, because I don't think we let there be any snapping, do we? Like there was definitely a snap there. Right? You saw that. So I feel like we still have a, a bit of a weird thing going on there. I do wonder if that's the simulation region thing. Because this should never really be doing any snapping. It's only ever going to move by a small amount towards the target uh, in any real case, unless these blew up somehow, maybe if these got set to some really weird values. Um, but but there should not have been that snapping. So that concerns me a little. I don't know if we have time to debug that right now. Um, but that shouldn't really be the case. So something weird was happening there. So that's also a problem is the restoration. We almost need to look at the hero's push direction because the, what also happens here is if I go downward and then snap back, that counts as forward velocity uh, on the hero, which we don't actually want to count for the stairs. Um, but anyway, uh, what I'm more concerned about at the moment is that weird snapping behavior. And I do not know what that would be from. Like I said, I can understand why if you're in overlapping 
areas, you could get uh, jitter with the velocity because we're cold setting that right now. But that snap seems excessive. It seems like we're actually changing the position discontinuously, not, uh, not through this. <clears throat> So let me take a look at this here. Um, so when we're coming through here, you can see as we're doing this, we've got we're looking at all of these in world space. Uh, I'm sorry, in, in uh, simulation space, right? So all of this code is all in. Uh, is all in the space of the of the current region, all of this stuff. Uh, and we set the simulation center based on that. We set the target based on that. Um, but this right here is is not really right, is it? Because the camera's position Well, I guess it's okay, because the camera's position has never really been considered yet. This new camera P is not a thing, right? That's just not involved at all. Um, so really, this is the first time we look at the camera position. And we should be able to unpack those relative to whatever we want. We can certainly compact them relative to the simulation center. I don't see why we couldn't. Uh, and then when we map the P back, it should just work. I, that, that does seem... Uh, that does seem like totally a reasonable thing. Hmm. I don't know. It's, it happens specifically when the simulation center changes. So that does give us a pretty good clue. Because you can see right here that this little, this um, yellow box, any time that discontinuous jump happens, that's what's going on, right? You can see that happening. Um, so I wonder if <sighs> changing the simulation center definitely is part of the problem. I wonder if there's something happening outside the camera code. I don't remember how we're really doing anything outside with the camera uh, that would cause that jerkiness to happen. Here's how we determine that delta p uh, when we do the simulate. So it looks like what we're, what we're doing here is we're saying, all right, we're going to simulate the world forward. For some reason, we update the camera down here, which doesn't really make any sense. Because that means it's going to be a frame behind, right? Which is a little weird. So you would think you would do a begin sim, then update the camera, like simulate, update the camera, and then set the camera like viewing right here. I feel like this is kind of all a little bit tangled up, to be completely honest. And then we get the frame to frame camera delta. We would know what that was. It would be, you would just take it around here. You wouldn't have to save it from frame to frame. You just know what it was uh, directly there. Uh, 
And I feel like that's a saner way to do stuff. You know, if I look back here at, at when we're doing this, I don't, yeah, I don't really see any particular reason why this stuff can't be done uh, inside here, right? Um, inside that sim area, like, like there's no, and the sim bounds, like we don't really want the sim bounds to be based on the camera anymore. So I feel like that was why that was happening before. So I kind of feel like I want to untangle that a little bit as well, because I feel like that could easily be causing problems as well. That w It's also going to make the camera lag, which is not great, right? So I do think, yeah, we would want to do something like, okay, you know, you want to simulate the world here. You want to update the camera here. Uh, you don't need to store this, I don't think for any particular reason, I think you would just say, well, we can snap the location of the world's camera P before we do the update. And then get the new one, because that's in world space, so it's always going to be the right amount. And that's how much the particles would have to move. Right? Because um, I don't really know if this is a good time to be doing this, because we don't have very much time left, but. Um, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, so if I did do that in here, you can see that we would do the update here, then we do the, the update. Uh, this is not right yet, because now we actually need to, oh, let me get rid of this as well. Uh, we need to have the camera, we have to have the camera matrix and stuff like that get built after we actually do this. Because now this is going to be wrong. Um, but at least that's in a saner place. Uh, let me go ahead and hop down here. See that shirk is still there. Very interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, so what I would need to do here is I would need to pull down this code that's actually setting the camera stuff up. Uh, all of this stuff is fine because this is just default parameter things. Uh, I don't know about this part here. Again, we probably want to make this stuff a little bit cleaner. So there's just a ton of camera stuff happening in here, which is just mostly for the debug stuff. Then this is the thing that actually does the camera transform creation, uh, this stuff here. And this unproject is just a, some test code, so we don't really need that in the moment. Uh, so let's see. The sim bounds are just literally doing that. Uh, so we should be able to basically take all of this code and actually do it later, right? We should be able to do that after we update the camera. Uh, however, I don't actually know. When we call simulate, I'm guessing that we're also, we have to have set the camera by that time um, because otherwise, I guess that's the, that's the thing that'll get us. That's actually going to do the rendering. So we would rather set the camera after we update, right, where the, because otherwise we're always a frame behind on the camera. I'm going to go ahead and undo that because I won't have time to really do it uh, today. But I think that's worth disentangling, right? Because I feel like we want to make sure that in simulate, in here, 
uh, update and render entities. Uh, I feel like what we want to do there is we want to be able to do the camera, setting the camera after we've updated the entities, basically. Um, we want to move them all and then set the camera. And we can still do that in a single pass if we want to, right? Like we can still uh, write out all the positions of where we're going to draw the entities and just not have set the camera transform yet, right? I mean, that's still uh, totally possible. So I don't really know uh, how we want to do that, but I feel like we will want to do that. Uh, again, that's just my guess. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put a to-do in here, and we'll look at it next week. Uh, so inside here where we are, um, what I would like to do is say, like, okay, yeah, you know, could we sort of And I feel like what we would want to do with that, right, is we'd want to say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and start our quads. We'll push all the entity quads out in the, you know, uh, we'll basically output all of our vertex buffer data, but we just won't set the camera transforms on them yet, right? And we'll want to set the camera transforms after we've already done all that simulation, and now we know where the camera should be. We'll set it then. I feel like that's what we actually want to do. Now, that has nothing to do with the bug we were seeing necessarily. Uh, it's just something that I think we would want to fix. And so we'll, we'll fix that, or at least we'll try to fix that uh, next week. Uh, Safort V, there seems to be a second problem with Staircam 1 versus Staircam 2, i.e. you need to be moving even though you're on the first stair so the collision areas are out a bit. Um, I'm not sure I quite understand what you're referring to yet. Uh, we haven't really gotten to the point where Staircam 1 and Staircam 2 are done, so uh, there's a couple weird things about them, but I'm not sure what you mean by the collision areas are out a bit. Rook tag, are the trees below smaller than the trees up top? Um, they should be because of the angle, right? Um, yeah, so these are a little steeper angle-wise, if that makes sense, although it's hard to tell which one's taller, really. But uh, the reason is because these are pointing more directly up at us, if that makes sense. And the reason for that is we allowed there to be, uh, we allowed the trees to be tilted in perspective. So we don't have to. And I don't know which one we should go with in the end. Um, but if you look at when we did our push quad, uh, basically what we did is we allowed the z-axis to actually have some three-dimensionality to it. So that's the completely uh, orthographic tree, where the tree is just slapped on directly. And then they're the same size on both of them. Uh, but if I get rid of that, uh, you can see that they're tilted. And that gives them a little bit of a perspective to them, right? Uh, and so, like, as I uh, go, you know, over to other places, you can see as the camera moves, uh, you know, the trees kind of shift a little. If I make it so that I, it's, uh, 
the camera was always focused on me directly. Uh, which would basically be this. Uh, so now you can kind of see, like, if I'm walking along, do you see how there's a perspective shift uh, in the trees as we go? Uh, you can kind of see how that, that works. That is what you're seeing there. So, you know, it's certainly a matter of preference which of these we should go with. Um, again, if I was to turn that off in the render group and just say no, uh, then what you can see is kind of as I'm walking around here, the trees, while they their positions relative to each other shift uh, based on how high up the block is that they're on, they themselves will never shift. They're just strict sprite stamps. Personally, I think I do um, prefer them sh shifted. Uh, I don't know, it just that that extra tilt adds something uh, for me visually. So I kind of prefer it, I think. I don't know. We'll we'll see um, what happens, but that's what's going on there. Uh, but why not? Are you going to experiment zooming by changing the FOV rather than changing the distance? Uh, no, probably not. I am not like I I don't know that the FOV really wants to change there. We don't really want to compress the field of view for any particular reason. Like we're not going for a disorienting camera effect or anything, so. Uh, why use velocity and not, for instance, acceleration as a constraint parameter? Uh, no particular reason. We may, we may want to use acceleration. I don't know. I'm just adding some stuff to the camera. Uh, and it seemed like velocity was the natural thing in this, po this particular point. Uh, but we've got a ways to go before we're like having a nice camera. So you know, may maybe we will use acceleration for things. Uh, why are the health bars flickering seems to be most notable? Oh, uh, because that's just Z fighting. Right now, we the health bars are kind of, um, we, we have not really done anything with the health bars. I don't even know why we're still drawing them, because they're not actually there for any particular purpose. But they happen to be right on the ground plane, which is, you know, so you end up with, with two things that are at the same Z, and the Z buffer can't resolve two things uh, that are slightly off like that. So what we want to do, if you want to fix that for some reason, which, like I said, is not really important at this part point. Um, but if you take a look at the draw hit points thing here, uh, when we're doing this, I, all you would need to do is make sure that they had some Z to lift them up off the ground uh, is probably all you would really need to do. Uh, so I don't know, like probably that would be sufficient, right? Um, so that's, that's all that, that's just the very traditional Z fighting, the same kind that you would, uh, see anywhere. It, 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 that's, that's all that is. Uh, Radovic, uh, or Radovich, I don't know how you pronounce that. Off topic, is it normal for a trivial code change to lead to a 250 megabyte difference file? Uh, is this an optimization MIPS architecture weirdness? I guess I'm going to have to stop you right there and ask, are you saying that your executable is a quarter of a gigabyte large? And not just that it's a quarter of a gigabyte large, but that it's actually a quarter of a gigabyte different in size than it was previously. Who knows how big it actually is, but at least a quarter of a gigabyte. 
Is that actual, actually what you were asking? That sounds terrifying. Uh, Rooktag asked, what do you want to fit in the camera view, the whole room, or some amount of tiles so camera movement per room is needed? Uh, again, I don't care yet. I, I don't have any particular uh, desires in that area. I just want to make sure... Um, uh, I just want to make sure that we support whatever we want. So it should be easy to make the camera code do either, is I guess what I would say. In the push bit map function of the handmade render group, you have a shadowed V4 parameter color that is masked by the U32 color. It compiles as a warning, uh, which is an error in VS 2015. Uh, yeah, if you want me to get, get rid of that for you, I can. Um, what function are you talking about? Push bitmap. Uh, so you're talking about this? Oh, well, yeah, but that's inside a new scope. Why is it complaining about that? That's not an error. That's, that's just, anytime you open a scope, you're allowed to override variables. That's just kind of dumb. Um, I mean, I'll change that, but I don't, I would just turn off that warning because that's not a, I'm not super into that. Um, but here, if, if it helps. Uh, that should get rid of that for you. Um, the other thing, there was another thing uh, that I remember recently that we could take care of if we're doing that right now. Um. When building the platform layer, do you see complaints about the usage of push setup in handmade render group H? Push setup is defined in handmade render group CBP, but not included in the platform layer. Uh, and so what we need to do there uh, is go, I think it's the problem is it's up here, right? Um, yeah, this is this transient clip rect uh, that's doing that push setup. Uh, so I suspect what we should probably do, I don't know if we can do this or not, uh, but let's try it anyway. If I move this down here, what happens? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to move that into here, uh, and hopefully that uh, solves the problem. Um, I moved... Uh, push setups usage into render group uh, uh, hopefully that will fix uh, Kim's issue there Should also mark today. All right. Uh, team R and B. Does the profile still work? If not, what is a quick overview of the work that is needed to get it working again? And was it purely a display issue that we could not see it? Um, yes, that is. Uh, that is correct. So <clears throat> if you take a look at, it is display. Um, if you take a look at the profile here, what's happening is this, we, we don't really use clip rects very often. They're mostly used here. Um, but what you can sort of see is we have a bunch of, like you can even see the profiler is, is popping up a tooltip here, right? 
Uh, but basically what we have is for one of two possible reasons, either A, we are because we are drawing this background in the wrong order, the Z buffer is preventing the actual text from showing up, right? Is thing one. Thing two is if the clip rect setting is wrong, uh, then we would have that as well. And in fact, that looks, you can see that looks like a clip rect problem there. Because, hey, that's, that's, some, uh, that's some profile data right there as well. So I believe the problem at the moment is just that when we're doing our clip rectangles, for whatever reason, our clip rectangles, uh, when we updated the renderer to the 3D renderer, we are no longer processing clip uh, rectangles properly. So we need to handle those, right? And there's two places uh, if we wanted to fix them. I'm not going to fix them now, but there's two places that we have to make sure we get right. Uh, so one of them is, like you can see in the debug, uh, assume it's in the debug UI. Let me look and see where we're setting it. Uh, so there's one of them. So here's like some of that profiling stuff, right? And you've got the clip rect here, and it's doing this uh, call with the backing transform bounds, blah, 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 right? So when we do that get, get clip rect call, uh, that is something that needs to be done correctly. So you can see in here we have a get, get clip rect call that's doing whatever it's doing here. It's then producing a result that has to be used as a clip rect. The problem with this probably at this point is uh, it probably needs to get fed through the actual transform, right? Uh, we, we now have that camera transform from setup. None of this stuff is going through it, right? Um, so I think that's probably most of it. Uh, you know, uh, just looking at this here. Yeah, so my guess is, right, inside the render group, uh, we've got the render transform. Uh, we probably want, or, and also last setup. Um, so probably what we want to do is is actually use uh, that last setup, this thing here. Uh, what we probably want to do is, is use the projection matrix and actually uh, do it. So you probably want the offset and the dimension, right? Uh, I don't know what space the dimension is getting passed down by. Uh, that's a good question, and we should figure out how we're doing that. So here we're doing bounds. The bounds, so the boundary uh, that it's using is actually going to be in world space, it looks like. Uh, it's an XY boundary. So presumably what you want to do there is say like, okay, you know, the, the min corner is the offset, uh, the max corner is the offset plus the dim. Uh, and then presumably you want to transform these two, right? Uh, so you want to do something like uh, group last setup proj times. So you want to like push uh, the corners of this new clip rectangle through. Uh, we also have an object transform. So if I remember correctly, the object transform just has all that has in is an offset now. Uh, so you'd want to do like offset p. Uh, and then I think you'd have everything you need because once those go through the projection matrix, uh, now they're in clip space properly. So all you would need to do is do a min max. Uh, and you'd be done. The problem is you need to adjust for the window bounds here because uh, this, again, once this comes out of here, it's going to be in the negative one to one space. And so you need to do the 
divide, the perspective divide, and then you need to do, which, you know, again, we could do, um, Uh, but then you need to actually adjust it out to the window rectangle. And so we probably want to actually, um, ha we probably want a utility function for this as well. Uh, but, you know, that's that's actually known. It's in, it's screen dim here. Uh, so we want to, like, uh, produce, we want to put these into to screen spaces. Uh, so, you know, probably we want something like this, where we'd just be able to say, you know, uh, get screen point something like that uh, where you'd be able to just pass one of these in and say like oh, okay you know um, here's the world P uh, we transform it and uh, you know, do the synthetic divide. Uh, we then say, all right, now we have to transform it to a screen space. Uh, so we're going to take the the px, and uh, that's going from negative one to one. We need it to go from zero to one, basically, right? So we need to do like 1.0 plus, uh, and we need to do half of it, right? Because um, we want the negative one to one to map to zero to one. We want to add that to the screen dimension. Or, or rather, we want to multiply that by the screen dimension. We also have the problem of it wanting to be s centered. It's going negative 1 to 1, which is 0 to 1. I think that's it, right? So it's, it should just be the screen dimension x uh, times, yeah, I mean, what you're looking at here. I think. Uh, don't quote me on that um, because it's probably all wrong. Uh, but when you, uh, after you got that, well, then you can just do get screen point group object transform offset, and the max corner is group object transform offset plus b 3 gen 0, 0, 0. Uh, so something like this is what you're looking for. And uh, let me see here. Offset P must have cloud. Yes, that's true. Uh, and uh, this is a transform. I don't know uh, how to do the 4 by 4 here. Goop. Uh, although, actually, do I even need to call transform? Does it just do it if I put in a four element one there? Probably does. That's probably how I wrote it, right? Yeah. Um, screen dim is undeclared. That's OK. I just got to access it off of the group. So that should do the transform and map it to the screen. Uh, and these need to be rounded after that. to force them to integer coordinates. So that's not going to work because, I mean, I just slammed a bunch of stuff in there and it's going to be wrong. Uh, but that's roughly what you're looking at. So now you got to go debug that path and, and get that, you know, you can see it's, it's getting closer to working, right? Uh, but it's not quite there. Um, and so you just got to look, uh, yeah, and, and see what's, what's up here. Uh, but that should be what you need to do. You do the transform. Um, do the synthetic divide. Then you're in negative one to one space. Did I map that correctly? Let's see if I did. 
Um, uh, so I have a uh, equation here, right, where I am going to pass in uh, and f of x, uh, and I want f of x to equal something. We won't say what that is quite yet. I need f of negative 1 uh, to equal 0. I need f of 1 to equal the height of the screen, or the width of the screen, w. Um, and so I want this equation to look, you know, it's, it's just going to be some kind of linear equation, so I want it to be like an ax uh, plus b, right? Um, so substituting in there, I have ax plus b uh, if f of negative 1 is the equal 0. That means I also equal a, or negative a, uh, plus b has to equal 0. And f of 1 means that uh, a plus b has to equal w. Uh, so in this case, I could say, for example, um, if I just solve this guy here, what I end up getting is a has to equal b, right? Is that what that looks like? That's what that looks like to me. Uh, and in this case, if I can sub that in, then I basically know that uh, w has to equal uh, 2a, right? Uh, or a equals uh, width over 2. That's what it looks like anyway. Uh, so what the equation would be that does that mapping is just going to be width over 2x plus width over 2, right? Uh, and that does look like it works because at 0, it, you just get the middle of the screen, which is what I want. At negative 1, I get 0. At positive 1, I get right. So that's, that's all right. Um, uh, so let's see if that's what I actually got here or what I was actually doing. There's the width over 2. Right, uh, And so if I wanted to pull this out, I would just get width over 2 x plus 1. Uh, and hey, that's exactly what I get, right? If I just rearrange these terms. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that mapping is correct. That all looks good to me. So, yeah, there's something more subtle wrong here. Like I said, I don't know that I super have time to debug it today uh, because I wasn't, uh, that wasn't one of the main things we we're going to do in the episode. Uh, but we do, we, you know, once you get a reasonable thing working here for get screen point, um, <clears throat> you should be good to go. I guess I don't know what they're doing in terms of Z coordinates that they're passing in there. Hopefully they're passing in reasonable Z coordinates, but it's orthographic, so it shouldn't matter. Um, yeah, so I think that's all reasonable. The other question uh, that you have to look at too, after you can, if you can verify, and it's pretty easy to test to get screen point because you should be able to uh, just look at what some screen points end up being equal to like moving, uh, asking around the corners. What I was going to say is the other thing you have to do is um, the clip recs are done with the GL scissor call. Uh, and so the GL scissor call is uh, going to, this is not, we don't care about this. This is the one we care about. Uh, the GL scissor call is going to be interpreted, I want to say, relative to the viewport. Or rather that the viewport, yeah, I, I, the, the scissor and the viewport interact in a weird way as well. Um, and so you'd have to double check that that's, that that's getting set in a reasonable way too. <clears throat> Uh, but I think that should be fine. I 
I'm not sure where clip scale X and clip scale Y are coming from here. I don't know what this is for. The width of the draw region versus the width that the thing is supposed to be. So that looks like we're just accommodating for the fact that we might be drawing I don't know why that's there. I understand why this is here, because this is in the case where, again, we have, uh, yeah, that render target zero. We're not doing this anymore. Either because we're, you know, we have a multi-sample buffer, uh, so that's doubly not relevant. Uh, so I do wonder about this stuff because we'd had this in there before uh, for dealing with clipping rectangles um, when we weren't drawing to a particular size frame buffer, but that's not what we're doing anymore. Uh, so I feel like those are not relevant, super relevant. They don't have anything to do with this probably, yeah. Uh, but um, we just. Let me just see. So we have some interesting stuff to look at there. We should look at this because that's, we should look at both of these because we also have this. It's interesting, like it leaves uh, a previous copy getting blitted on there, I guess that never gets cleared. So we should also take a look at that. But again, it doesn't look like we need those clip rect. Um, it doesn't look like this is relevant anymore because since we have to render to an off-screen target now, uh, We should probably get rid of those. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I think again, like I said, uh, team R and B, that's really what you need to debug if you want the profiler back. Um, the other thing you can do is turn off the clip rect for in short order, right? So like if you really just want it there uh, and you don't want to have to debug uh, the new uh, render stuff for the clipping code, what you can do is, um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that nobody really uses transient clip rect except the debug system. So what you can do is just not do it, right? You could just say, um, Oops. <clears throat> like so, uh, and then I, the clipping is off. And so then, you know, you can get uh, the, the printout just fine, but it's, uh, it's, it's gonna, you know, it overflows by what, it doesn't clip clean to that um, location. But yeah, so, that's what you got to do uh, if you want that working properly again. You probably would also want to go fix the text rendering order so that it's easier to read uh, and stuff like that. But that's about it. Can you click threads on the profile window? Um, you mean with, with the clipping dis disabled or?
Oops. Uh, is this this what we're talking about? Um, so yeah, so that's it. It's just fixing those clipping rectangles. That's it. All right, I am going to sign off now. Uh, and the mouse over text, again, I it works just fine, except for the fact that the text draw order is backwards. I think a lot of the Z buffers are so I think it's underneath. Um, <clears throat> when you mouse over, uh, I'm pretty sure you're always getting. I'm pretty sure you're always getting uh, the situation where you draw the hover text first and then back. So all that stuff had to be cleaned up if uh, for the 3D renderer in the future. All right. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining me for the episode of Handmade Hero. It's been a pleasure coding with you as always. If you would like to follow along at home, you can always order the source code, uh, or rather you can pre-order the game, which comes with the source code, on handmadehero.org uh, and play around with it yourself. We also have a forum site you can go to if you want to uh, ask questions, a Patreon page for us about the video series, a schedule bot uh, that lets you know when we're gonna be live, and a episode guide that you can go to uh, if you would like to Catch up on old episodes. That's it for this week. I'll be back next weekend uh, where we can uh, do some more camera code and get that working a little more cleanly uh, and uh, maybe add a couple more things like room, room to room movement and zooming to the right level for various rooms or other things like that we might want to do. Uh, and again, that's just to get us in a place where we're comfortable that the camera is performing reasonably. It doesn't have to be perfect chipping quality camera, but it has to be relatively close so we know that that's going okay. Uh, that's about it. Hope uh, you all have a good week of programming, and I'll see you on the internet. Take it easy, everybody.